next is Mercury Redstone 2, MR2, another stepping stone toward manned spaceflight. In Mercury spacecraft, already in production at the St. Louis plant of the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation. At Huntsville, Alabama, personnel of the Marshall Space Flight Center apply finishing touches to a specially modified Redstone. The rocket's autopilot will control the flight path from liftoff at Cape Canaveral until burnout in space. This is the Redstone rocket motor, 78,000 pounds of fiery thrust. In McDonald's surgically clean white room, the MR2 craft nears completion. Electronic systems to control automatic equipment in the craft after separation from the booster must be checked and rechecked. The retrograde rockets will be tested in space. The antenna housing will transmit telemetry. The heat shield must be inspected carefully before attachment to the craft. The MR2 craft will carry a chimpanzee, specially trained for the mission at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. He will ride in a form-fitted couch equipped with levers he will operate in response to flashing colored lights. His responses will be recorded for aeromedical analysis. As the launch date nears, capsule number five undergoes complete systems test at McDonald's St. Louis plant. And then, capsule number five was airlifted to Cape Canaveral for final testing before launch. pre-launch tempo is increased. Now, the chimpanzees arrive at Cape Canaveral. One will be selected for flight. The environmental control system in the capsule is tested in a pressure chamber, and the chimpanzees are subjected to the same pressure and oxygen conditions that the astronaut will encounter when manned flights begin. One at a time, the chimpanzees are acclimated to the couch and the spacecraft through simulated flights in the pressure chamber. Reactions of the chimpanzees to the pressure chamber test are carefully studied as their training continues. Originally selected for the MR2 flight because of their physical and mental characteristics, the chimpanzees turn out to be willing pupils and they quickly endeared themselves to Project Mercury personnel. Meanwhile, testing of the spacecraft continued. A landing impact bag used for the first time in MR2 will get a performance checkout. The landing impact bag designed to reduce the shock of landing by one-fourth is formed by the heat shield, a flexible skirt, and the base of the craft itself. During the capsule's parachute descent after re-entry, the heat shield will be extended some four feet, and air holes in the flexible skirt will enable the container thus formed to fill with air. Upon impact, the air will bleed out through the holes to ease the shock of landing. In the case of a water landing, such as is planned for MR2, the bag will fill with water to improve the stability of the capsule against wind and wave action. Not too many days later, the Redstone launch vehicle arrived at Cape Canaveral. The modified Redstone with its Mercury craft spans 84 feet high and measures 70 inches in diameter. Its takeoff weight is more than 66,000 pounds. The Redstone engine develops approximately 78,000 pounds of thrust. After another round of testing, the MR2 booster is taken to the launch pad and raised into its launch position. The structural steel gantry around the launch pad permits ready access to the rocket and the spacecraft as they are prepared for flight. In Hangar S at Cape Canaveral, the spacecraft gets a final check for perfect weight and perfect balance. Everything must be just as right as human minds can make it.
Then the escape tower is attached to the top of the spacecraft and checked out for perfect alignment. A solid propellant rocket is attached to the top of the tower, which will separate the craft from the redstone in the event of an emergency during pre-launch or during the powered portion of the flight. The Mercury craft and its redstone meet at the launch pad. The pre-planned flight path for MR2 defines a ballistic trajectory 254 miles downrange from launch to touchdown. The spacecraft is to reach a maximum altitude of 120 statute miles. The chimp is to undergo about four and a half minutes of weightlessness. The redstone booster will burn for about two and a half minutes, reaching a velocity of almost 5,000 miles per hour. At booster shutdown, the escape tower will be jettisoned. Ten seconds later, the posigrade rockets fire to separate the craft from the redstone booster. Total flight time, 15 and a half minutes. The next decision, which chimpanzee to send on the flight? Each of the candidates gets a complete medical checkup. Weight, temperature, heart, ears, eyes. Blood pressure. Throat. And the honor goes to an astro chimp who was nicknamed Ham. Holloman Aeromed, his home base. A friendly little fellow in a form-fitted couch about to make his mark in history. Ham is laced in his couch and wired for sound. The electrodes on his feet will give him a gentle shock in case he forgets what he has been taught to do about pulling the levers. But Ham learned his lesson well. The red lever, at least once every 20 seconds for the red light, and the white lever for the blue light. Ham is doing fine. Next step, a dress rehearsal. On the MR2 flight, Ham is a stand-in for the astronaut. The van that brings him to the launch pad is the same van that the astronaut will use. Ham's form-fitting couch is like the one the astronaut will use. The first United States astronaut will take the same ride in the same van, out to the same launch pad, and up the same elevator to the top of the rocket and into the Mercury spacecraft, just as Ham is doing today. The astronaut will go through this same kind of dress rehearsal. Indeed, about the only difference is that the first astronaut will climb aboard the spacecraft in his own pressurized suit and into a couch previously installed for him. The spacecraft in which the first astronaut will ride is almost identical to this one. The environmental control system is the same, and the automatic attitude control system is identical. Ham's dress rehearsal is perfect, and the launch is set. The order goes out for the spacecraft recovery forces to proceed to the landing area. As the ships deploy, operations personnel in the Mercury Control Center prepare to monitor the flight, begin the countdown, 320 minutes to launch, a little more than five hours. Tanks of liquid oxygen arrive and fueling begins. The Redstone rocket burns a mixture of alcohol and liquid oxygen. Throughout the night, the countdown continues. And in the pre-dawn hours, Ham arrives at the gantry. This time, it's for real. When he arrives at the top of the gantry this time, he will find astronaut Alan Shepard on hand to observe the preparations, the launch, and certainly to wish Ham 
luck on his flight. At dawn, the recovery ships are on station. And at Cape Canaveral, MR2, with Ham aboard, is ready. The medical monitor shows Ham resting quietly. His heart beats steady, respiration normal. Now, it's time to pull the gantry back. MR2 nears launch time. In the control room, quiet efficiency is the only outward sign. The flight director presides over the countdown. Four, three, two, one, zero. Fire, liftoff. And Ham is on his way. In the control center, the flight surgeon's eyes are glued to his console, monitoring Ham's condition. Concern mounts. Ham's heartbeat and respiration climb fast. MR2 now leaves a visible trail, and it is flying faster and higher than it should. An abort condition is indicated. Something is wrong. But with the abort system operative, the Mercury craft begins to behave exactly as programmed. The flight surgeon watches the monitors, and now Ham is doing better. His heart and respiration rates drop almost to normal. The life support system seems to be working properly. MR2 is up over the top, and reentry begins. On a condensed time scale, this is the reentry sequence. Deploy the drogue chute. Mortar off the antenna housing to deploy the main parachute. At touchdown, jettison the main parachute because the recovery forces are on the move. The Mercury craft landed farther downrange than programmed. Follow the signals. The spacecraft is spotted from the air. Radio its position to the recovery ships. Recovery ships, chart a new course. Take a new heading. Recover the capsule and hurry. Order flank speed, more speed if possible. Plow through the seas, follow the beacon. Rendezvous with the capsule and fish it out of the sea with its very important passenger, VIP. Wave action during the recovery phase has torn off the impact bag. But bring it back. Put it on deck. Bring the crew out to open the hatch and remove the couch. And be aware, the spacecraft traveled 40 miles higher and 120 miles farther than scheduled. The engine shut down a fraction of a second sooner than programmed. The abort system worked, but Ham sustained 18 G instead of the normal 11 that was expected. But Ham is fine, and MR2 was successful. Test objectives were achieved. Mercury systems worked in space. A man could have made the trip into space and back safely. MR2 was a significant milestone on the highway to man's flight into space. And the evidence is a live, space-experienced chimpanzee.